literally when me and my husband were like getting ready to go to the car for me to go to the emergency room because I was in excruciating pain and I couldn't breathe, I thought I was gonna die. You guys, I am nine months post-op and in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys an update on how this whole myomectomy uh, journey has gone thus far because I know there's a lot of you who found my channel through my previous myomectomy vlogs and I thought why not bring you guys an update so if you're interested go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up don't forget to subscribe if you're new here and let's go ahead and get started but wait I forgot to do my intro <laughs> hey you guys welcome and welcome back to my channel my name is Nicole I'm an accountant and on my channel I love to share all things career fashion faith and lifestyle so if you're interested in any of that kind of content make sure you stick around by clicking that red subscribe button and turn on your notifications because I post videos pretty much almost uh, every Sunday and I do try to give you guys a bonus video on Tuesdays Wednesdays or Thursdays So to keep up with me just make sure you have your notification bell turned on so you never miss an upload from moi All right, let's get into the whole myomectomy Talk if you guys don't know what a myomectomy is a myomectomy is when you get your fibroids removed so uterine fibroids are removed and the process is called a myomectomy and there's different types of myomectomy you can get a laparoscopic myomectomy like i got which i'm going to explain in a little bit or you can get a different type of, of myomectomy uh such as a c-section cut you can also end up having to get a full hysterectomy which is pretty much them having to remove your your uterus depending on how severe your case is my fibroid situation was more on the mild side so i ended up opting for a laparoscopic myomectomy and you're probably like nicole what is that all that means is that they did three small incisions on my lower belly and like my upper area and then I also have an incision on my belly button. If you're a little confused or if you want to see my emotions raw and real go ahead and go to the vlog that I'm gonna have over here or over here go check that one out after you watch this video. I am nine months just about nine months uh, post-op and I wanted to just share with you guys how my recovery process went how everything has been how my body has really been feeling because I think oftentimes not a lot of people understand uh, the severity of it whether you have one fibroid or whether you have 50 fibroids yes that is a thing um, it's just very hard on us women and especially I wanted to talk to you guys about it from the point of somebody who works full-time I'm a full-time employee I work as an accountant my job is very demanding on top of that I am a wife and me and my husband are doing other things in life so it's like encompassing all of that and throwing in fibroids in there throwing in surgery in there throwing in you know like women my women's health in there right in this whole uh mix of things so that's why i wanted to bring this to you guys let's talk about uh just, just wanted to give you guys a bit of a background so when i started my whole fertility journey and if you don't know and you're new here i am on a fertility journey um when we kind of started like going to find out answers um during my ultrasounds i kept getting the same thing from the nurse they're always like and at the time I was like a fibro what I didn't know what it was at the I think when I first found out about it I was 25 I was either 24 or 25 when I found out about it I'm 27 now for reference and they kept telling me that during all my ultrasounds and then one day it just bothered me so much that I finally went and I googled what a fibroid was I did my research on it and I found out that okay this might not be the best thing for my health when I've asked my previous doctors about it um, they mentioned that it's nothing for me to worry about because the one that they saw in the ultrasound was outside of my uterus it was a pedunculated fibroid which means it's hanging out of your uterus so they're like it's not impacting anything it's not causing miscarriage 
miscarriages or fertility, you don't need to worry about it. And when we came to my new fertility clinic where we currently are now, we did the ultrasounds again, they talked about it, and um, the doctor, my husband and I, we sat down, had a chat of a game plan as to what tests we're gonna do, what I should do, and essentially, before my egg retrieval back in October of 2021 and one day I'm gonna come on and share with you guys my whole journey thus far I'm just not quite ready to share it yet in terms of like fertility side I'm telling you guys this just to give you context for it to make sense hope you guys are with me if you're with me make sure you have to click that subscribe button give this video a thumbs up comment a heart or something so I can know that you're with me so back in October 2021 we did our egg retrieval and we said okay we're gonna do the egg retrieval and then from there we're gonna wait a little bit and then figure out next steps and then ultimately the next step was for me to get my fibroid removed before we moved on with anything IVF related my surgery was scheduled for December it was right around about a month after I started my current job so it was really hard for me um, I almost canceled the surgery because I'm like I just started a new job I don't want it to have a bad look I made sure that I disclosed my surgery during my hiring process once I got the job offer I made sure that I disclosed that I was gonna be having the surgery in December ultimately they were fine with it they told me the protocol and procedures that I had to take and my job had no problem with it my team had no problem with it and with the surgery, I needed a two week recovery time before I could go back to work. And that two weeks was just because I do work from home and I don't do a lot of physical activity. So there was no problem with me resuming being able to sit down for longer periods of time after two weeks. If you're somebody who works in an office setting where it's more demanding of you having to maybe drive to work or somebody who does more heavy lifting than I do, your recovery time will probably be longer. On average, recovery time is anywhere from a month to six months. But pretty much it took me about one month to initially recover. So I stopped working on, I think, December 14th or 15th. I had my surgery on December 16th, I believe. And then I didn't go back to work until January, until after the holidays. So if you've been around for a while, you know that my wedding anniversary is December 21st and it was not a fun anniversary because we usually travel for our anniversary just as a getaway time to reset and refresh as a couple but we were stuck in the house because we couldn't go anywhere because of little old me so it was very hard on me just mentally um, and emotionally going through that just because we had a trip plan and all of that had to be canceled and I was just always home like I couldn't do anything so it was very hard on my body physically I couldn't stand up for long periods of time I couldn't sit for long periods of time I spent pretty much four weeks of my life in bed about 90% of the time it was hard but it was doable a little later on in the video just stick with me I'm gonna share like do's and don'ts and what to prepare for or if you're somebody who knows somebody getting a fibroid surgery how you can help them and all the uh, things you should buy and all that so just stay tuned it took me about a month before I could even sit without losing my breath if you guys go back to those videos you guys will see when I was talking to you guys I was out of breath all the time so it took me about um, a month before I regained my breath during the first few days after surgery I did have some minor complications um, I um, I didn't pass gas as I should have they released me even and they told me that if I didn't pass gas within the next four hours I would have to go back I was having lots of sharp abdominal pain um, and because I need to pass gas and I need to urinate and literally when me and my husband were like getting ready to go to the car for me to go to the emergency room because i was in excruciating pain and i couldn't breathe i thought i was gonna die it was bad y'all and that's when i had a little urge to pee i peed just a tiny bit and just that little bit of pee really really made a difference and then i could breathe again but it was so hard and then my stomach was super bloated I was having a reaction to the Percocet 
so I had to go back to the hospital. They prescribed me some other medication, but I just ended up not taking it. I just didn't take any medication besides Tylenol. Um, I didn't want to take any of the other drugs that they off that they gave me because I had such a bad reaction to the Percocet. All that, fast forward to a month, I finally started feeling better again. Um, I think it took me a month uh, just about a month or maybe three weeks until I got behind the wheel and I only drove to go like down the street But it wasn't until a month or even a month and a half till I started driving again So it was hard um, Just going through that and then About three months in I started feeling better my incisions started healing um, unt Until today I get different flares on my incisions where they start to itch really bad so that's something to be mindful of. Mind you, I have four incisions um, and they flare up at different times and you have to fight the urge to scratch. So cortisone is something that I've used that's helped me a lot. Um, in terms of physical activity, every time I try to work out or do something, I will be in excruciating pain. And I would try to explain that to my husband because he's somebody who likes to go on walks and stuff. But like every time I would explain it to him, he just wasn't getting it. Um, but I would force myself to go on walks with him just so we could be outside, especially as the weather started to get nicer. I live in New York and the weather here is horrible <laughs> in the winter time, but in the summer, it's beautiful. Three months, four months in feel pain. And until today, I do get pain. Nine months later, I'm still feeling pain, especially if when I overdo things. If I do heavy lifting, if I'm, uh, I've tried to go to the gym and work out a couple of times and then I just get the sharp pain and I feel it like where they did the incisions. So it's definitely not an easy surgery, an easy thing to go through, but it's doable. And because I've had fibroid surgery, um, when I do have children, most likely I'm going to have to get a C-section and I'm perfectly fine with that. Nine times out of 10, if you do get a myomectomy, if you get a fibroid removed, removed or any kind of surgery in your uterus just expect that you'll probably have to get a c-section at least for your first uh, pregnancy I think in terms of how I prepared uh, I watched tons and tons and tons of YouTube videos mainly from doctors talking about it and I would watch the doctors in India performing the surgery just so that I can see what they would be doing to me obviously I was knocked out for it I didn't know what was happening but I'm just that kind of person to mentally prepare I watched a lot of the actual surgery videos and then I found a couple of women who talked about their experiences and obviously their fibroids were more severe than mine. Um, so their experiences were a little different. And then in terms of preparing for actual surgery day, I got new pillows. I got the really long pillows, the body pillows. I got two of those because I needed one for my back, for like my upper back when I would sit down. And then I just needed another one for like my lower parts because there will be times that I would have to be elevated just to not feel the pain so I got two body pillows which helped a lot I got a heating pad which helped me a lot um, baggy clothes I just went to Walmart before surgery and then I got like two pairs of sweat sets and obviously that was in the winter when I got mine but I think this can still apply for anybody um, getting sweatpants large enough sweatpants so that it's easy to pull on and off when you're going to surgery and it's going to be the most comfortable thing i had to get granny panties <laughs> the really big underwear i had to get that just because that's the most comfortable thing and i think the most comfortable underwear that i had during that time was the one that they gave me at the hospital after my surgery i got a lot of pads because you are going to be bleeding afterwards um, and it's not like a period. It's just gonna be constant So I think I was changing about three four maybe four or five pads a day for the first few days And then it slowed down to maybe changing one to two pads a day But you are gonna be bleeding so be mindful of that have comfortable underwear have comfortable clothes have some comfort food I had like ice cream and yogurt um, I don't think I could I don't remember if I was able to have hot foods right away but um, I think I couldn't eat soft Solid food for some time so I had a lot of mashed potatoes a lot of really soft mac and cheese um, everything that I had was like soft like kind of like what people do for babies because I couldn't eat solids 
for about two weeks and I think for everyone it's different. I was advised to not eat solids for my first few days but I just couldn't handle food. I was very nauseous. So being mindful of that, I know some people take melatonin and like nausea medicine. I didn't take nausea medicine. Have a lot of ginger ale or just and teas to help fight the nausea. That helps um, and have a table tray. I had one of those uh, table trays, the bed trays. I had a bed tray that I could have my food with and then I also had a bigger tray for my laptop for when I did start working again. I was sitting on my uh, office, I was sitting in my office um, for about two, max three hours and then I would have to go work from my bed the remainder of my work day. So I would try to do like in the morning when I had more energy, I would sit in the office and then the remainder of the day I had to work from bed. And if it was a meeting, I just did a workaround um, where if I knew I had a meeting, maybe I would go sit in my office and then as soon as the meeting was over, go back to bed. Do a lot of walking. I did walk, we walked around the apartment and around my apartment floor, we would go like up and down down just to really help regain the strength and that was about it the last thing I wanted to say is like if you know somebody going through it just really be there for that person because everybody handles this differently your emotions are all over the place and unfortunately through this surgery some people do end up losing their uterus which means that they can't carry their own physical baby and I highly suggest I know some people religious wise they're against this um, I'm a Christian and it took a lot of prayer for us to even go through everything that we went through but at the end of the day God is faithful and his promises are yes and amen so if you are going through it and you might have more fibroids than you think or the doctors are saying like hey you might have more fibroids or they're thinking it's more risky I highly recommend please if you can get an egg retrieval done bank your eggs bank your embryos it's not gonna take away from you being a woman it's not gonna take away from your future um, of potentially having children but to be safe than sorry um, I would recommend freezing your eggs or getting embryos done if you're if you're married and you and your partner want to have kids or future kids I would recommend getting your embryos made and frozen um, just in case you lose your uterus at least you have babies in the freezer or if you're a woman and you're not in a relationship yet but you still you don't know I recommend getting your eggs retrieved and getting your eggs frozen um, obviously when you get your eggs retrieved i'll do another egg retrieval video to walk you guys through the process it doesn't mean you're going to lose all the eggs in your body that's not what it is you're still as a woman your reproductive system nine times out of ten will still be working while you have all of your reproductive organs but if you get an egg retrieval done at least that's guaranteed that's giving you a higher chance of um of having children one day because you already have the embryo uh the the eggs there and then you go on to the next step so if you guys want me to make a video talking about egg retrieval showing you guys my egg retrieval experience all that leave a comment below so that i know to make a video on that and if you're going through it don't be scared the lord is with you just make sure you pray have people praying for you um i had the people at my church and my prayer group praying for us our family knew about it we did open up to our family and let them know that hey i need to get fibroid surgery this is what's happening um and my family our family was very supportive they were like praying for us checking on me all the time like my mom and my um my mother-in-law like was like super helpful always calling checking in and you know how moms are they like give you their own remedies and stuff and like of course my partner my husband was super supportive um because he had to like drive me there to the surgery he couldn't go in with me i literally had to go alone and guys i tell you guys that was like the worst thing that ha happened because they wouldn't let him in. I had to walk into that scary hospital by myself and going into surgery, I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna come out alive, but those just thoughts going in my head. I'm like, am I gonna come out alive? Am I gonna come out with a uterus or not a uterus? Like what's gonna happen? Because he wasn't there, I was also scared. Like, so during the whole wait time and while they were prepping me, I was texting him and was like, yo, don't just, don't agree to just anything. If they try to kill me off, 
And yes, those are thoughts going in my head of like, if they try to kill me off, whatever they try to tell you, make sure you read the fine print before signing. Don't just consent to anything because I need to wake up after this. Um, but he was, of course, super supportive, like texting me, um, talking to the doctors, like, and then of course, taking care of me when I was home and just make sure you're prayed up. I was praying before, I was praying during, like I was praying, I was reading my Bible on my phone, um, just really praying, talking to God and just saying like, God, let your will be done, let your will be done. Up until they put me the anesthesia, like as they were putting me the anesthesia, I was just praying and just being like, Lord, thank you because you know I'm going through this. And just like having my personal conversation with him. So make sure that you are praying. Have a good support system around you. Um, if you live alone, please, if you have a family member or a friend that could come stay with you or that you can go to their house, do that. You can't do this alone. I'm telling you guys, no matter how big or small your surgery is, you can't go through it, especially the first week, you can't do it alone. You're gonna need help. So please get help if possible because it's gonna make all the difference. So again, go check out the other vlogs that I have detailing the whole process. You guys are gonna see my emotions, real and raw. And let me know in the comments if you want more of these kind of chats. If you wanna know about my egg retrieval process, I will um, make sure to do it. But you guys need to comment below saying that you do wanna see it from me. Make sure you guys check out some of my other vlogs. I have work from home content. I have travel content as well. And I will see you guys in my next video. If you made it this far, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Subscribe, I love you guys, and I will see you next time. Bye.